All right, I think we're all set here. I hope you're as excited as I am. And you know what? Let's dig right in. Here you can see I've created a brand new project that has a single index.html file. And on that note, if you can, I highly encourage you to work along with me every step of the way. Okay, let's go ahead and pull in view. Now we can actually do this a couple of ways, but let's start with the simplest approach. I'll pull it in through a CDN. I'll use a service called unpackage.com and I want view, specifically version three. And if you wanna make sure you got that right, just copy the URL and paste it into your browser. So if we run that, sure enough, I have the source code for view 3.2.33. Okay, next let's initialize view. We can do that by calling view.create app. I'll feed it an empty object for now. And then I want to mount it to an HTML element. Usually we call this app, but you don't have to, it doesn't matter. I'll pass a selector here. Okay, so in fact, this would work. It doesn't do anything, it's a blank page, but we are successfully initializing view and mounting it to the page. So what we've done here is basically said, view has access to this element and its children, but nothing else. So if I have a header here, view won't know anything about this because it's outside of app. Okay, so let's make it a little more fun. For a lesson one exercise, let's do the typical hello world. So I will have a greeting and I'm gonna use this mustache syntax here. Think of this as our way of saying, echo out the value associated with the data property greeting. But I don't have a greeting. Let's do that now. Within our object here for our application, I'll add a method called data and that will return an object. We'll set greeting to hello world. Now you can think of this object as the single source of truth for the application. Uh, it's a really common phrase, but if that's confusing, well, in the past, the DOM itself was often the single source of truth. So I mean, in the, in the early 2000s, you were using jQuery, you would write a query, you'd dive into the DOM, you'd pull out an H1, you'd grab its text content, and then you would manipulate it. That's what I mean when I say the DOM itself was the source of truth. Uh, that's very different from what we see now, where a clean JavaScript object like this is actually the source of truth. And if we ever need to manipulate it, we don't write a query to dive into the DOM, we simply change the value itself. Very cool. All right, so let's have a look in the browser. Uh, at the moment, you could simply open file from your browser or boot up a server however you normally would. I have node installed, so I could say npx serve. All right, and it works, we get hello world. So again, it's not the most exciting thing, but on the other hand, this is pretty cool. So let's take it a little further. What if I also want to show you the number of characters in the greeting, just as an exercise? Okay, something like this. I wanna see dynamically the number of characters in the greeting. All right, well, once again, we'll use this mustache syntax and I'll call greeting.length. This is basic JavaScript. So if we come back and refresh, I still get 11, but now we are determining this number dynamically, which means if I change it to something like what is up, refresh, and now we get 10. Okay, but let's take it even further. What if you want full control over the greeting? Let's wrap this within a paragraph tag, like so, and then we'll have another one up here. And first up, we'll add an input here, and I'll set vModel to greeting. And just come along for the ride for just a minute. Okay, so if I come back and give this a refresh, sure enough, the value of the input is equal to greeting. But actually vModel, it's doing a little more than that. It's not just binding the value of the input. It also handles listening for when that value is changed. Like this, if I change it to hello world, notice how the text below the input updates on the fly. How cool is that? And trust me, it's very cool. This may not be the most uh, impressive demo in the world, but trust me, I've been writing JavaScript for a really long time and way back in the early 2000s, even something as simple as this was wildly difficult. You were having to set up all sorts of event listeners. You were dealing with browser compatibility issues. It was all a big headache. Uh, but now with Vue, it couldn't be simpler. All right, so what we can see here is that this vModel directive is doing two things. One, it's binding the value of the input to whatever you pass here, in this case, greeting. 
but it's also listening for when you type into that input. And when you do, it updates the underlying value. So it's sort of a two-way street here. And here's an even cooler thing. Vue has what we call reactivity. And it basically translates to this. Vue is constantly keeping track of your source of truth. And whenever it changes, Vue will automatically or auto-magically, haha, uh, re-render the page to reflect the changes. It's really cool, and it happens behind the scenes without you even needing to know what's going on. I'll give you an example of this. There's also a method on your component called mounted. This will fire automatically by view when the component mounts to the page. And this will be almost immediate. Refresh, and I get my alert. So let's do this. Let's set a timeout, and we're going to say, how about after three seconds, update the value of greeting. All right, this dot greeting equals changed. Okay, now watch. One, two, three, and it changes. So that's what I mean. We updated the greeting after three seconds, and view, because of reactivity, picked up on that change, and it determined, oh, I need to re-render the DOM to reflect that new value for greeting. Okay, so you get all of this for free. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I hope you're excited. We have so much to cover, and we'll tackle it one step at a time. Stay tuned.